Hello and welcome to TechUp, an MSP-friendly how-to channel dedicated to Veeam-powered data protection solutions. My name is Brandon McCoy and today I'm here to talk to you about the how and the whys of deploying Veeam backup for Azure through the Veeam Service Provider console. Let's jump right in. Now, there's three ways that you can deploy Veeam backup for Azure. You can deploy it directly through the marketplace. So go to you know, portal.azure and search for Veeam and deploy it. You can push it out and connect it to uh, an instance of backup and replication. Right? So whether you've already got the appliance or you want to deploy one, um, you can use backup and replication to do that. And then the third option is you can use the service provider console. Now, hopefully you're already using the service provider console. It's a uh, free single pane of glass for our service providers. And um, all three of these options have pros and cons. We're going to talk about them. And of course, the goal here for this video is deploying it through service provider console. But let's start with standalone. Uh, and if you know, you're know you from the 90s, you, you hopefully get this reference here. Um, great band. Uh, so when you do this standalone, there's a few things that you're not getting. One, you can't use your rental licenses. So if you deploy the appliance directly through the marketplace and you put the license on the appliance, you have to purchase that license through the marketplace and you can't use a Veeam rental key. Also, what happens in the cloud stays in the cloud. So backing up to maybe AWS or backing up to a Cloud Connect and on-prem is not available. Restoring to an AWS, to Hyper-V VMware, also not available. And the restore capabilities are limited to restoring a file, a volume, or the whole machine, and again, all within Azure. Out of these three, this is typically the least uh, favorable option. Now, through backup and replication, this honestly is a great way to do it. Um, you can use your rental licenses. It'll be deployed on the backup and replication server, and it'll consume through there. You can do a backup copy job through what we call an external repository. So that is the repository that the Azure backups go to first, which is blob storage, can then be copied to pretty much any other kind of repository you'd like. Advanced restore options. So we've got our Veeam explorers, and we've also got the ability to restore to AWS, restore to VMware or Hyper-V. Now there is an additional Windows machine needed, right? So the appliance runs on a Linux virtual machine in the Azure environment. Backup and replication is installed on a Windows machine. If you're already using backup and replication, you can just add the Azure appliance. But if you're not, you know, it is an additional piece that you have to consider. I'll keep in mind the VBR server can be deployed wherever you'd like, in Azure, on-prem, doesn't matter. So the third option, um, this is kind of the best of both worlds, right? Uh, hopefully you don't need another Windows machine because you're already using the service provider console. You have the rental licenses capability. So in this case, your Cloud Connect server uh, is going to be consuming licenses for the Azure backups. True multi-tenancy for multiple customers using different cloud products and maybe even products outside of cloud backups. You can't do the backup copy jobs. You can't restore out of Azure. So those additional backup and restore capabilities are only through the backup and replication, that second option. Um, but for just you know, traditional cloud-born, all contained in Azure backups, still being able to use your rental licenses and get some multi-tenancy, this is the way to go. So that's all I really have for slides. Let's jump right into the demo and we're going to walk you through the steps. So here we are in the lab. I'm on Service Provider Console version 7 and I'm going to head on over to the configuration tab on the top right. Then I'm going to drop down to the plugin library here on the left and I'm going to search for Veeam Backup for Public Clouds. Okay, now the first thing I need to do is I need to add in my Azure account and full disclosure I've already gone through this process uh, it took me you know about five to seven minutes to get this set up um, so I wanted to have it ready for the video but I'm just gonna kinda walk you through what you would do so um, if you click new and you select Microsoft Azure it's going to give you a list of creating a new service account or uh, specifying an existing account 
So similar to the other public cloud options, Veeam can deploy all the necessary resources for you. It's going to create an account with all the permissions needed to perform certain data protection activities. Um, it's going to create the networking, right, and all the permissions that you need. If you would rather do it yourself, you can create a service account, specify the roles. Um, Veeam does generate an account with the least amount of permissions necessary, but still, for whatever reason, you may want to create your own. I'm going to edit the one that I've already created. So come in here. I'm going to give this a name. OK, so typically I would select right here, um, create an, a service account, um, or I can specify an existing service account. So right here. Uh, your screen should say uh, create service account. You've got your Microsoft Azure environment. For me, it's global. I, I imagine yours will be too. There's some other options there. Okay. You're going to be prompted with uh, an MFA. So you've got this um, code. You copy this. You um, click the link here. It's going to ask for that code. Then you're going to log into. Uh, your Microsoft account, next, next, finish through there. Once you've got everything signed in and talking to the console, um, it will begin to deploy the service account and the necessary permissions in your Azure tenant so that you can uh, then create the appliance and all of the necessary components to start backing up your Azure workloads. <clears throat> all right, so next and finish there. I'm just going to cancel out of mine. Okay, I've got my Azure account set up. Now I want to actually deploy the Veeam Backup for Azure Appliance. So I'm going to go down to Appliances right here. I'm going to select New, Microsoft Azure. This right here, this site, this is my Cloud Connect server, right? So whether you're deploying these appliances through Backup and Replication or through the Service Provider Console, you're really deploying the appliance through a Backup and Replication server. And in this case, Cloud Connect is my backup and replication server. I'm just doing it from this uh, service provider console interface, okay? So this is the Cloud Connect server I'm choosing. Um, again, you can connect to an existing appliance, but I'm gonna have Veeam deploy this for me. Click Next. Um, some licensing information, you know, you can read through that. Uh, once you're ready, click Accept. Okay, specify Microsoft Azure account to use for application. Now I'm gonna select this one. Um, also, I could have just created an appliance and specified a new account from here. So whichever way you know you want to get to this screen, I like to create the account and then deploy an appliance in the account, the service account that I created. Okay, select a Microsoft Azure subscription, right? So you should be familiar with the Azure subscriptions. You've got your uh, uh, subscription, you've got your resource groups and all your components under that. So I'm going to select a subscription. Um, the one I'm using is a Visual Studio Professional. This is uh, my own uh, environment. Select the required region. So this to typically be in the same region as the virtual machines you're backing up, right? There can become uh, it can become expensive when you start deploying resources in different regions and things are going across. Um, so I'm going to choose the same region that my production is in. Okay. North Central US. Okay. Um, select a resource group for the backup appliance. All right. So I'm going to select this resource group right here. Okay. All right. So let's create a name. We'll call this VB Azure, Veeam Backup for Azure. Now you can put in a description for this appliance if you'd like. Okay. So this is where, you know, kind of the Veeam magic happens, right? I can have Veeam create the VNet, the subnet, and the NSG, right? So the virtual network, the, the little isolated environment where my environment is, um, the subnets, right, the different VLANs, and then all of the rules, the inbound, outbound that are needed. Um, I can also go into Azure and create those myself, right? Maybe you want to have a little more control. But again, for ease of use, and just to show you how the Veeam software works, I'm going to have Veeam generate all this on its own. OK, I'm going to have an IP address so that the um, Veeam Cloud Connect server can access the backup appliance, um, that you can you know, like a shortcut to the appliance itself. 
and we'll select dynamic. Um, you can create an, a static IP address. You'll just have to uh, procure that from, from the Azure portal. I believe there are some charges associated with that. So make sure you look into that before you decide uh, what to do here. All right, so now guest OS. So select an administrator. Um, that's going to be the uh, the admin of the service account I just created, right? Now creating an SSH key. So we do need a key pair, um, which is a PEM, a public private key that allows us to connect to the virtual machine. I do have one created already, but uh, for the sake of this video, let's create a new one. So I'm going to go on over to portal.azure and I'm going to search for SSH and it should come up right there. SSH keys. All right, here's some keys I've already created. Let's create a new one. Okay, this is my subscription that I just chose. Uh, this is the resource group that this key is going to be inside of. Region uh, should be left blank because it doesn't have a region. Okay, let's give it this a name. So we'll call this VB Azure key. Yep, I think I have no spaces. Okay, VB Azure key. Okay, generate new key pair. You can create some tags if you'd like to you know, kind of uh, organize what this key is, but let's just go ahead and review and create. Okay, download private key and create resource. Okay, so now I've got the PEM key downloaded here. You probably want to hold on to that for safekeeping somewhere. However, in my uh, Veeam backup for, uh, for um, sorry, Veeam service provider console here, uh, let's go previous, let's go next. See if we can get that key to show up. There it is, VB Azure key. All right, click next. We're gonna validate that key. Okay, time zone. So obviously, you know, you want the uh, time zone to to be where uh, where you're operating out of, most likely. See if I can find one. There we go. Okay. Next. Okay. We're going to have Veeam create everything for us. Let's finish. I'm going to pause the video. We'll be right back. All right. And we're back. It took about 10 to 12 minutes. I can see here that my appliance has been deployed, although there's an unverified under the appliance deployment. Let's click here. It says review the security certificate installed on the backup appliance. Okay. So in order to verify this, let's check the uh, appliance and click verify. Okay, this is a Veeam self-signed certificate. Looks good to me. Click next. Okay, so IIS credentials. So the um, service provider console is installed on a Windows machine. There's a web UI component to this. Now, that could be installed on the same machine for an all-in-one, or you may have put the web UI on its own separate machine with its own credentials. Um, whatever the case, you want to put the uh, admin credentials of the web UI, which may just be the web, I'm sorry, the um, system credentials of the service provider console itself. So I'm going to put in my local admin creds of my console because it is an all-in-one machine. Okay, verifying that all is good. Okay, and now all is well in the world. All right, so we've got our Azure account, we've got our Azure appliance with our resource group, our virtual network, subnets, network security groups, um, the permissions needed. There's one more thing we need to do, and that is add a repository. So Veeam Backup for Azure is going to back up to Azure Blob Storage. So we'll click New here. Um, if you haven't created an object storage bucket yet, you will want to go to your Azure portal and click Storage Accounts. Create a storage account, select the, um, the resource group, the um, availability zone or the, re, you know, the uh, data center you want it to be in. Um, once you've created the storage account, you'll then create a container. So hopefully you know how to do that. If not, you can refer to the Microsoft documentation. Um, you, know, you can do that there first. I've already gone through that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create. Okay, we'll call this VB. Azure Storage. Okay. Repository account. We're going to go with default. You can 
add a new one here. Maybe you want to have a different account for your um, backups, which may be a good security practice. Okay, storage account. Give that a second. Okay, there we go. So VB Azure 321. Now you'll also notice I have the immutability disabled. Um, immutability prevents people from deleting your backups. That may be something that you also want to do. Uh, I, you know, as I say in these videos, I'm not necessarily doing every little thing I would do in production. I'm just trying to get you through the clicks so that you understand how to deploy the product and, and the high level overview. Okay, so container. So I need a bucket inside of my storage account and I've got this one created called Tech Hub. So let's apply that here. Okay, folder. Um, We'll just create a new folder and we'll call it VB Azure. Okay, storage account with soft deletion, enabled or not supported. Um, so that should be okay there. Um, storage class. Okay. Okay, so this says cannot add a repository with the soft delete for blob option enabled. Okay, so let's go back to VB for Azure in case you run into this error. And I'm going to go to my storage account right here. And I'm going to scroll down to uh, blob soft delete. And this is enabled by default. Okay. So when I created the bucket, I, I didn't change it. So what I want to do is all I got to do is uncheck that box. Okay. Uh, and let's uncheck the box for blobs and containers. And click save. Full disclosure, I actually. Uh, didn't mean to do that, but you know what? Keep it rolling, and you know, in case you run into that issue too, now you'll know how to fix that problem. All right, let's see if that updated on the other side, and we'll try one more time. So we'll go previous. Um, let's do a rescan real quick. Okay, there we go. So create a new folder, VB Azure storage class. They're going to choose for me. Uh, this is the immutability option. You would have to have the um, um, object lock uh, enabled for that. Okay, oops, forgot to select a folder here. Okay. Um, we can also enable the backups on the repository if we would like. I'm just going to leave that turned off for now. And we can you know, throttle um, as well for performance reasons. I'll just click next and finish. All right. So just finished that. We've now got our account, our appliance, our repository. Right? Maybe you had a couple stumbles like I did. But as you can see, it's pretty easy to get through the interface. I'm now going to go back and I can start registering um, my different accounts you know Veeam Backup for Azure is multi-tenanted um, another thing I need to do and this is the last thing I'll show you is uh, on the plugin library here if I go to my VCSP Pulse Portal if you don't have Pulse Portal configured um, I recommend that you do but you can also just create a key from Pulse I'm going to do it from here and remember in the beginning I said that for using your rental keys, you have to have a Veeam backup and replication server managing your Azure workloads, right? And so even though the service provider console is what I just went through, on the back end, it's really my Cloud Connect, which is Veeam backup and replication, just a different license. So I'm going to go to license keys here. I'm going to click a new license. Product, I'm going to select Veeam, Cloud Connect, and Public Cloud, right? That's going to give me my Cloud Connect key. And then I'm going to add public clouds, public uh, file shares, or even uh, public cloud databases for like Microsoft SQL. So I would just add the number of workloads. And then I would put that license on my Cloud Connect server, and I would be able to start creating backup jobs, and it would consume licenses from that server. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it valuable. Um, Please make sure to watch the other videos on the Tech Hub for more, and we'll see you next time.